Welcome to Military Collectors this week. We are in Canton, Ohio, the MAPS Museum, and it stands for Military Aviation Preservation Society. They have a wonderful, wonderful museum up here. Years and years of history, collection, well, listen, that's what Military Collectors is all about. Just like this great Cobra and the setting that we have here, MASH 4077th right here, aviation assets. There's over 48 planes on the grounds, both inside and out. A Hall of Heroes, all this week on Military Collectors. Roger that. And joining me now is Reed Kimball. He and I served together, which is very, very unique. Uh, I find folks all over the country that I did back in the early 80s at the 101st Airborne Division. He was an ADA brigade commander, provided us our, what we call our duck hunter support from air defense artillery. Now Reed is one of the many, many 1100 volunteers here at the MAPS Museum in Canton. Sir, thank you Pleasure. so much. And Pleasure. it's amazing that the military and retirees were all, it's a small circle. How did yeah. you end up at this wonderful facility here? Well, it's uh, for a lot of us. Retirement is not something we like to do. We can't handle the extra time. So after I retired from the service, I became a school teacher. I taught chemistry and physics. I was still in the Army Reserve and I got called up for Desert Storm. And by the time I got back from Desert Storm, my teaching job was gone, so they made me the principal of the school. So I spent the last 10 years as a school principal. I retired from that job to come back here to Akron. And I really didn't like the all the time that you have as a retiree. I had to have something to do. Uh, we had a show here five years ago when I started called the Collings Foundation. They fly in World War II bombers, and I came to the show and just felt, or came to that show and just fell in love with this place. Well, again, you are one of 1,100 volunteers, over 50,000 man hours of volunteer time to keep this facility running. So, let's let's go around the history of this. Okay, I, I know 25 years ago it began, but let's talk about. You started with one plane. One plane and 14 members. We had original 14 members. We had one hangar bay or one bay in the other building in restoration and it's grown since then. We now have three buildings. We have 48 airplanes. We have over 50 displays and we just started the process as moving up to the second floor and we'll have three more display rooms up there. So the, the museum is moving in the right direction. Well you know what's so unique about the history of aviation is it's basically captured here you know there are a lot of bits and pieces around even the smithsonian but you have some unique items to include number six of the blue angels which mm -hmm. is right behind us here tell us about that plane before we move to some of these others well that plane we got from a museum in illinois when it closed about two years ago the chanute air museum and we brought it over. It was not in real good shape. Uh, we worked the Navy Department because they own it. Uh, and they finally gave us an option. You have to come get it now or we're going to just throw it away. So we went over. We have to disassemble it. And this is a Delta winged airplane. So the wing is in one section. So we have to disassemble it, put it on a truck, bring it back over here. Now Chanute's Museum did a nice job on it, but the paint job was not real good on it. So we had to strip this plane down to bare metal repaint it. We got permission from the Navy Department to repaint it as a Blue Angel plane. And we were going to dedicate it last November. Well, what we try to do, and this museum is not just about the airplanes. It's about the people that flew them, the people that designed them, the people that even dreamed about airplanes. So we found a local connection for this airplane. Okay? His name is on the cockpit, Stu Powery. Now, Stu Powery graduated from Firestone High School right here in Akron, Ohio, and went to the Naval Academy. He became a fighter pilot, and in 1981, he became a member of the Blue Angel flight team. He was pilot number six, which is the opposing solo for the Blue Angels. Now, the next year, he, this is a two-year tour for them. They were going to move him up to pilot number five, the lead solo. Well, Stu was killed in a crash of a plane, just like this one, between the 81 and 82 season. So we decided we were going to dedicate the plane to him. We found out his sister lives still, still lives here in Akron, Ohio. So we contacted her and said, well, we want to dedicate to him, but we want to make sure it's correct with the family. So she contacted his widow, who never remarried. She lived out in California. 
The widow contacted his two children. They were one and three when Stu died. One lived in Texas and one lived in Hong Kong. And we flew the widow and we flew all the family members in for the dedication ceremony. Oh, that's just fabulous. And we had 350 people here in the hangar for the dedication. Wow. So we try to find, as we do in the gallery, local connections. It's not just the planes, it's the people. Well, Reed, I want to talk more about all the wonderful airplanes here, both inside and out of the museum, but you have a very special section of the museum that I know a lot of the kids like. Tell us about the Hall of Heroes? Well, our gallery is more a traditional portion of the museum. Now, mo everything in there has been donated. Everything in there is original. But the displays in there are from local men and women. These are not the people you hear about in history books. When we bring high school students in there, we spend a lot of time in there because that's tying local history to what these kids in high school are trying to learn in their history books. But there's a number of things in there. Original telegraphs. There's a piece of the Arizona in there. There's a signature of Amelia Earhart in there. There's a number of stories in there, but they're all local guys, which makes it very important to us because this is about not just airplanes. This is about the people that dreamed about them, the people that built them, the people that flew them. Well, and you know, one of the unique things about the state of Ohio is tanks have been built here, tires built here. Mm -hmm. You've got the Corsair was built not far from here. Right. Rosie the Riveter was born here. Yep. And so munitions was built here in the Rust Belt. And so that's one of the unique things military collectors we look for not only in the collections that are amassed by even nonprofit groups like this, but just different people around, because you're right, it's all about the people who preserve and collect and the volunteers who make it happen. So with that, I know there's so much more. And so folks, when we come back, we're gonna take a look at more of the MAPS Museum here in Canton, Ohio. When Military Collectors returns from commercial break, we go behind the scenes at the MAPS Museum and look at some of the aircraft that they are restoring and some of the improvements to the museum to keep people coming back time and time again. If you have missed any past episodes of Military Collectors, be sure to go online at militarycollectorstv.com and you can see not only past episodes, but also read in-depth features on the people and their passion of their military collections. If you are interested in preserving and collecting military vehicles, whether you're a military veteran or just have a love for military vehicles in general, then you may be interested in joining the Military Vehicle Preservation Association. The MVPA is dedicated to providing an international organization for military vehicle enthusiasts. For more information and all the benefits a member receives with joining the Military Vehicle Preservation Association, go online at mvpa.org. For 50 years, Ranger Boats has been paying tribute to America's armed forces and their families, not only in the United States, but those men and women who serve all over the world. At Ranger Boats, we appreciate the dedication that these men and women do each and every day, protecting and preserving the very foundations of our freedom. Ranger Boats wants to give back to America's real heroes with our Operation Troop Salute program. For more information, visit rangerboats.com today. When is the last time you traced your roots, not your family's roots? The roots of the food you eat, those roots should run deep, not from afar. Just like the legacy of farmers here in South Carolina. Day in, day out, farmers from every corner of our state are carrying on the traditions of bringing locally grown food to your table. So, choose food that's rooted right here. Choose certified SC grown. It's a matter of taste. We all depend on trucks. Chevy. Chevy. Chevy trucks. We think it's because Chevrolets are the most dependable, dependable, dependable trucks. Built to last a long, long time. With durable, durability, and rugged, ruggedness. I like the extra power. Pulling power. Messy power. And quality. Seems they make them strong. With extra strong. Mile after mile after mile.
Well, for all you military collectors out there, there has to be some place where all of the collections start the restoration process. And we're right here. Reed has taken us in to the MAPS restoration facility right here on the grounds. It's just outside of the museum. Now, not many people get a look at this piece of what they do up here, but we've gotten a special behind the scenes, and these are some airplanes that are in the restoration. Reed, tell us about some of the restorations of the planes that you have in here, because you know, Again, one of the things that's most important about it, you've got planes outside, mm -hmm. you know, but I also want to talk here in just a minute. We've, you've got so much here to see and do. Yeah. The interactive pieces where kids and even big kids and grown-ups can crawl in and out of planes and all that sort of thing. But this is where really guys come, your volunteers come to make things happen. Yeah, this is the this is the backstage of the museum. We currently have three aircraft in here right now, an F-86A, which was a Korean War veteran. We have a BT-13, which was the second phase trainer during World War II, and an A-26 down in the far bay, which was an attack aircraft during the Korean War. But this is where the magic happens. On Wednesdays and Saturdays, you'll have people crawling all over these airplanes. There's a crew on each one. They're not A&P mechanics. They're not aviation mechanics. They're retirees, like a lot of us are. A lot of us are veterans. They just have time to do and want to build or want to build something into the museum and want to give kids and people this experience. Well, on, on the average, time wise, I mean years, uh, months. I mean to, to work on one. And I know it's not a it's not on a. I got to get it done now, yeah. but what's the average when one of these uh, planes is in here? It, it varies on the airplane and the amount of damage there was to the airplane, because typically we'll get bits and pieces. Now the A4 that we saw earlier, that was a two-year project. The B26 that's in the hangar we've been working on for 23 years, but it was a wreck in Canada. And, and when we got it in 1994, we just got the bits and pieces, so it all had to be rebuilt. And you can imagine trying to find parts for a 1940s vintage bomber somewhat difficult to find anymore. So what we can't find, we have to fabricate right here. So all the skin work is sheet metal. We have to fabricate, you know, the plexiglass for the cockpits from sheets of plexiglass. So it, it takes a while on some of these airplanes. Well, let's talk a, a little bit about some of the unique items that you have here, one of a kind. Uh, I'm sure even the Smithsonian uh, doesn't have some of these things. So uh, let's just start with what is your most uh, most unique airframe that you have here? Well, probably the most, the one that has the most local historical value is the Martin Glider. Uh, it was designed and built and flown by a local farmer from Canton, Ohio. Uh, and what he came up with was the first mono-wing type airplane. But he was a farmer. He could not find or he could not afford to buy an engine and a propeller, so it's a glider. Now in 1909, farmers didn't have tractors to pull their plows, they had horses. So the only thing he had to get this going up in the air was his plow horse, Billy. Now if you can imagine Billy running down the road, pulling that glider behind him, getting it up in the air. His first flight was January of 1909, about five years after the Wright brothers. But it's a little piece of local aviation history. And what's also unique is the second pilot of that aircraft was his wife. And Almina, uh, Almina Martin, in April of 1909, was the first female aviator of a heavier-than-air aircraft in the world. And that you don't find in history books, but that's a piece of local aviation history. The Goodyear Drake uh, is a one-of-a-kind. Goodyear made 19 of them after the war. That's the only one left, and that's a very, very unique airplane. The Gondola of the Spirit of Akron is sitting in the hangar over there, uh, the last Goodyear blimp was retired. There are no more Goodyear blimps in the world now. So if you don't work for Goodyear and you haven't won for the lottery, this is probably as close as you're ever going to get to sitting in a Goodyear blimp gondola. Well, you know, and that now leads me into the next uh, piece here, okay. Uh, yes, again, you can sit, you can crawl around them, you can get your picture made. I mean, you, you can sit in jet airplanes, you can sit in helicopters. Again, you've got a, a MASH set up out there mm -hmm. with a field hospital. And so that's what really is so unique about the collection here. A and tell us a little bit about all of the outside planes that you have. Well, as, as the director of education and a former school teacher, we realize here that the things that kids learn or retain best are not the things you get from textbooks. They're the things that you can reach out and touch. So whenever possible, and we're working on about four or five more to open them up out there, we'll open these airplanes for people to sit in. And that's not just the little kids, because it turns all of us into 10-year-old kids as soon as we walk through that glass door over there. But that's the special part of this museum. You can sit in those airplanes. Well, you know, and, and I guess finally, 
for those folks that have never come to MAPS. It's easy to get here. Canton's accessible. Uh, one of the major things I think is a must-see here is basically you guys are ever-growing. And so the future of this facility is really uh, just there's no boundaries. So tell me a little bit about what folks can expect over the years. You just don't want to come once, you need to come always. Yeah. Right now we have, you know, again, the 48 airplanes and the Gallery of Heroes. Within the next two years, we're going to have three more display rooms on the second floor. One is almost done. We're going to have a classroom slash meeting room on the second floor for corporate events. And we're going to have a 300 seat convention center on the second floor for people to do major events. Now we do a number of events here. We'll hold birthday parties in the hangar. We'll do weddings and wedding receptions in the hangar. We'll do corporate functions and corporate events in the hangar. We've had car shows here. We have pancake breakfasts here. So you can combine the visit to the museum with a lot of different things. Stay tuned. When Military Collectors returns, we'll show you what else the MAPS Museum offers besides just touring the museum. There are opportunities to fly certain vintage aircraft, so if you're an aviation buff, you want to come back and learn how you can be part of that special program offered by the MAPS Museum located in Canton, Ohio. The MAPS Air Museum is an internationally known museum of aviation and serves as a center of aviation history for Northeast Ohio. From the earliest days of flying to supersonic jets, each aircraft is significant in its contribution to aviation history. The MAPS Museum is where you can see aircraft that help win wars, push the boundaries of flight, and change the face of society. MAPS Museum is also dedicated to showcasing not only the history of aircraft, but of the men and women who designed, built, and flew them. The Gallery of Heroes enables you to see the sacrifices and achievements that these men and women went through during wartime and peacetime to advance flight as we know it today. Whether you have an hour or a whole day, there is something for everybody at the MAPS Museum, located just outside of Canton, Ohio. For more information, visit them online at mapsairmuseum.org and plan your trip soon. When visiting MAPS Museum, be sure to make your overnight stay with Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott Canton. Perfect for business and leisure travelers alike, the Fairfield Inn and Suites Canton is convenient to everything that the Canton area has to offer. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites Canton, you're their number one priority. Unforgettable memories begin the moment you pick up your first Browning. Unmatched security, fire protection, and storage options, Browning will be with you through a lifetime, protecting your guns and all the cherished memories you make with them. Keep your Browning memories safe. Every soldier's training is the same, but their story is their own. From the fields of Gettysburg to the tanks rolling across the sands of Kuwait, the story of the mounted soldier is a story of mobility, speed, and the historic power to shift the mighty tides of war. The National Armor and Cavalry Heritage Foundation is asking for your help in keeping the legacy of the United States Armor and Cavalry and telling the stories for many years to come. Start down in Port Royal with a basket of fresh oysters every bit as good today as they were back when Papa showed you how to eat them. Then to McClellanville for some fresh caught shrimp. Nice big ones you can just about hide behind. Toss in a few crabs that you pick up in Marl's Inlet. And by the time you get to Little River, you've got a seafood feast that tastes like South Carolina. Carolina caught, Carolina bought. Thanks y'all for keeping it local. Take a moment to think about the food you buy and eat. Is it fresh? I mean really fresh, or is it shipped from a grower hundreds or even thousands of miles away? Well, here in South Carolina, we celebrate fresh, locally grown food and unforgettable meals with family and friends. So choose food that's rooted right here. Choose certified SC grown. It's a matter of taste.
Our letter from the front line this week comes from George in Cambridge, Massachusetts. George writes, I recently discovered a signed photograph of General Douglas MacArthur in my grandfather's attic. Is it valuable? George, you may have discovered a hidden treasure. American soldiers brought home millions of souvenirs from their time spent overseas during World War II. From uniforms, photos, flags, and pistols, here's what they may be worth on the market today. American soldiers save so much of their gear that most of United States uniform items, helmets, and the like are not especially rare and sell for $125 or less. The uniform items that hold a significantly higher price are items connected to the Rangers, Airborne, or the Marines. There's a romance associated with these elite forces that makes their uniforms and equipment particularly desirable to collectors. Example, an airborne jump jacket might sell for $1,500 to $2,000, and jump pants go for $2,000 to $2,500. Autograph photos of General Eisenhower, General Patton, and General MacArthur dating back to World War II can bring thousands of dollars apiece. Autograph pictures of General Patton can bring as much as $10,000 for collectors. If you would like to have your military restoration project or collectible featured on the show, just send an email with your photos to photos at militarycollectorstv.com. Well, folks, real quick, we're back here at the MAPS Museum in Canton, Ohio, and with me, Reed Kimball's going to talk to us a little bit about something that's unique. they got a lot of airframes that are unique in there, but one thing, if you like to sit in an airplane, maybe you'd like to ride. Tell all the folks out there, Reed, how they can come up here. You do offer actual rides and vintage aircraft. Okay. Well, in August, we have a group coming in called the Collings Foundation, and on 11, 12, 13 August, they will be flying in a World War II B-17, a B-24, a B-25, and a P-51 fighter. They'll park them right here on the tarmac for the weekend. For the price of admission, they'll let you walk through them. And if you have a little extra money, they will sell you a ride in a vintage World War II airplane. Oh my goodness, so all of them will fly? All of them fly, they fly oh them in. Oh my goodness. Now. How many have you flown in, actually? I actually flew in one. I had the opportunity to fly in the media flight last year from Toledo over here to Akron on a World War II B-17 Flying Fortress. It's off my bucket list now. So There you go, Chad. Okay. <laughs> yep. Well, the good thing about it is you're kid-friendly, you're family-friendly. That's what's so great of having this museum here and all of the different things, the interactive folks. Once a year, you can offer the rides. Yep. I mean, you just have it all right here. I've got to thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And with that, if folks want to come up, they want to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Yeah, the easiest way is to get on our website, www.mapsearmuseum.org, and we have a presence on Facebook, and we have a presence on Instagram. Well, there you have it. And folks, you're also going to have a, a presence on militarycollectorstv.com. Just log on there. If you want to come up and visit, I highly recommend you do, right here in Canton, Ohio. Hey. NFL Hall of Fame, McKinley Museum. It's right in the Rust Belt of where many of the war machines that we have in the history of this great country were made right here in the great state of Ohio. If you have missed any past episodes of Military Collectors, be sure to go online at militarycollectorstv.com and you can see not only past episodes, but also read in-depth features on the people and their passion of their military collections. We all depend on trucks. Chevy. Chevy. Chevy trucks. We think it's because Chevrolets are the most dependable, dependable, dependable trucks. Built to last a long, long time. With durable, durability. And rugged, ruggedness. I like the extra power. Pulling power. Messy power. And quality. Seems they make them strong with extra strong. Mile after mile after mile. If you are interested in preserving and collecting military vehicles, whether you're a military veteran or just have a love for military vehicles in general, then you may be interested in joining the Military Vehicle Preservation Association. The MVPA is dedicated to providing an international organization for military vehicle enthusiasts. For more information and all the benefits a member receives with joining the Military Vehicle Preservation Association, go online at mvpa.org. For 50 years, Ranger Boats has been paying tribute to America's armed forces and their families, not only in the United States, but those men and women who serve all over the world. 
At Ranger Boats, we appreciate the dedication that these men and women do each and every day, protecting and preserving the very foundations of our freedom. Ranger Boats wants to give back to America's real heroes with our Operation Troop Salute program. For more information, visit rangerboats.com today. Every soldier's training is the same, but their story is their own. From the fields of Gettysburg to the tanks rolling across the sands of Kuwait, the story of the mounted soldier is a story of mobility, speed, and the historic power to shift the mighty tides of war. The National Armor and Cavalry Heritage Foundation is asking for your help in keeping the legacy of the United States Armor and Cavalry and telling the stories for many years to come. Well, all you military collectors out there, you can't stop off and see the MAPS Museum here in beautiful Canton, Ohio without seeing some of the sights and sounds. And we're here at one of the premier collections in, well, not only the United States, but probably the world, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I'm so happy to introduce our guest today, Tanja Marshall with Visit Canton Tourism. And she's gonna to talk to us about some other things that when you're up here in this part of the country, you can come and see other collections and other great sites. Tanja. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank Tell you, Tell us Bob. about Visit Canton and the tourism sites that you guys have got. Absolutely. We are best known as home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but we are so full of so many historic attractions and sites in the Canton area, from the William McKinley Presidential Library and Museum and Monument to the First Lady's National Historic Site in a place in our country dedicated to the accomplishments of our first wives, to the Ohio and Erie Canal Way and canal towns like Canal Fulton where you can even and experience a replica uh, horse-drawn canal boat. So there are, are so many experiences in our area that we welcome your viewers to come take a, a visit to Canton, Ohio. Well, you know, one final thing before we, we get out of here. Canton, Ohio, if somebody wants to come, they want to visit all the sites, you've got a great website. Tell everybody out there where they can go on the web, on Facebook, or whatever else in the social media site to come see what you've got to offer here in Canton. Yes, we keep it easy for you to remember. Visit Canton.com or visit Canton on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Well, there you go, Tanja. Thank you so much, okay, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Hey, we're headed inside. You got to come up here and visit it too. So when you're in Canton, stop by the Pro Football Hall of Fame and some of the other great sites up here while you're visiting the MAPS Museum in North Canton. Well, that's Military Collectors this week from Canton, Ohio and the MAPS Military Aviation Preservation Society Museum right outside North Canton, Ohio. I highly recommend you get on up here. Listen, and for those folks that might be aviation buffs, historians, if you can identify the plane that I'm, well, I'm sitting in, I ain't gonna fly it, log on to militarycollectorstv.com, send me a note, and hey, I may just send you one of these special military collector hats for answering our question. That's all we got from Canton, Ohio this week. We'll see you next week on another great episode of Military Collectors.